Hey everyone, hope you're well. Welcome back to The Den. I thought I'd shoot a, a quick video today on uh, Mr. Matt Hancock. Emphasis on the cock. Uh, most of you are probably aware that Matt is currently in the I'm a Celebrity jungle. Uh, for those of you who didn't know that, or don't know what it is, or even who he is, uh, I'm a Celebrity is basically a reality show here in the UK where a bunch of celebrities or Z-list or Z-list celebrities or has-beens are basically rounded up, thrown into a jungle in Australia um, and have all humility kicked out of them for our benefit. Uh, Matt Hancock was, or is I should say, an MP, which basically means he is a Member of Parliament. So he works within government, he represents an area of England and that area is called West Suffolk. So basically he spends his time going into London to argue and waste taxpayers' money, basically. Uh, but supposedly he represents an area of the country and he works within government. Now, uh, as I say, he's in the I'm a Celebrity jungle now, instead of actually being in government. Uh, he, <laughs> he was the health minister, uh, which means he was a senior and a very prominent member of government um, in 2020. Now, in case you can't remember what happened in 2020, we had the global pandemic, lockdowns, deaths, obviously probably the worst time to affect the planet in living memory. Uh, and as I say, he was responsible for healthcare in this country, one of the most prominent and important roles in government. Now, during his time, apart from being as useful as a vegetarian at a meat buffet, uh, he was tasked with sorting out contracts for PPE to protect doctors and nurses on the front line in the pandemic. And he misappropriated those contracts. He awarded them to companies that were owned and run by his friends or his associates. And he misappropriated taxpayers' money to the tune of £600 million. And then at the end of it, it turned out that all of that PPE was worthless and unusable anyway. Thanks, Matt. But yeah, pretty useless. In addition to that, as was widely reported at the time, his ability to look after some of the more vulnerable people uh, in regards to COVID was uh, non-existent. Most people be aware that if you've got underlying health concerns or if you're elderly or if you live in a care home, um, going into that environment is like it allows COVID to spread like wildfire. People, elderly people, those with underlying health conditions were being released from hospital and infecting people by the bucket load. And yeah, an awful lot of deaths are on his shoulders as a result. There's a lot of blood on his hands. A lot of people lost loved ones and were unable to spend, you know, last hours or last days with those that they care about because of Matt Hancock. Um, the spread of COVID in care homes and throughout social care was down to him and the decisions that he made. Um, just truly, truly unfit for office. Um, to top it all off, um, even when it wasn't mandatory under law, even when it was just guidelines, guidelines that he set, he decided, yeah, I don't want to follow those. He decided, I'm going to embark on an affair. I'm going to cheat on my wife. None of you can go and see any of your loved ones, but I'm going to go and bonk the nearest lady that I can find. <laughs> what a prick. Anyway, so in addition to fucking up the health service, wasting all of our money, potentially causing thousands of deaths that he didn't need to, he decided to go and cheat on somebody who worked under him, literally. Um... In case anyone is under any misconceptions of what my opinion of him is, he's a fucking donkey! Anyway, as I said, he is currently um, in the I'm a Celebrity jungle. As I said before, if you are a B-list celebrity or a has-been or a never was, um, they make you undertake a load of challenges for our uh, entertainment and for our benefit, and hilarity ensues. Um... And it's a reality show. They're in the Australian jungle for, I think, around a month. And then the winner is crowned king or queen of the jungle. Now, the UK, 
like many nations, is faced with an ongoing crisis, the likes of which we probably haven't seen in a long time. Like the rest of the world, we're living in a post-COVID world. Uniquely here in the UK, we've obviously got the fallout from Brexit. There's the ongoing war in Ukraine. There's the cost of living crisis that we're going through here. There's escalating energy costs. Uh, and instead of sitting in Parliament during this emergency time, Matt Hancock decides to fuck off, look after his self-interests and go to Australia. Rather than serve and represent his constituents in arguably the biggest national crisis since World War II. What does he get for this? A slap on the wrist. He gets suspended. Wow. For somebody who's earning between 80 to 100,000 pounds a year. Phew, do you think he cares? Not at all. Could you imagine if you or I, if we're permanently employed or on a contract or a freelancer basis, decided to fuck off to our employers and just go off on a jolly? Could you imagine what would happen? Well, apart from getting sacked and being told to clear our desk, we'd probably face some form of court case or something for a breach of contract. Now, how much is he getting paid for this month in Australia, I hear you ask? 400 grand. That's somewhere in the region of four to five times his annual salary for one month's work. Now, I don't want to have a go at ITV, they're the TV company, um, too much in all of this because they're onto a winner here. They've piggybacked off the back of this. They're going to be onto a, uh, a ratings winner. Millions are going to tune in on this to see him suck off a kangaroo or eat a, a kangaroo's anus or whatever it is that's going to happen to him. Um, I could do an entire episode on whether ITV were right or wrong to book him. Of course, from entertainment point of view and for ratings and money, it's a no-brainer. Um, now, apart from this disgusting, inept individual uh, being further brought into our attention, something else has come to light, which I wanted to really talk about today. Um, we're kind of we're kind of used to having inept people within government. I, I don't know if people can remember that weird looking advisor to Boris Johnson, Dominic Cummings, uh, the guy who you might remember drove all the way up towards Durham to go and look at a castle to test his eyesight. Oh yeah, by chance, his mum and dad lived nearby in the midst of a lockdown. Um, this guy was a fucking weirdo. I'm sure everyone would agree with that. But he did make one good point that I do agree with. Uh, he did say that MPs, by and large, are useless. They're not fit for office. They're clueless. They don't have any experience or skill set suitable for the office in which they sit in. What the fuck do they know? And I agree with him on that point. You've got people running the health service, like Matt Hancock, who got no medical experience whatsoever. They don't know how to run the health service for the benefit of those who are administering care. They don't know how to run it for those who are receiving it, such as you and me, the people who are paying for it. They've got no business acumen whatsoever, so they don't know how to stop it bleeding money until, well, like a bottomless pit, basically. Now, you've also got people like Rishi Sunak, who, on the face of it, very good economist, might make a good prime minister. He's already on the back foot because of what's happened with this Gavin Williamson saga. And obviously Gavin's had to resign and did Rishi know, did he not know? Doesn't look great for credibility or substance. And the problem that we have is whoever is taking office, whoever is representing us, whoever is an MP, they've all been to Oxford or Cambridge or somewhere like that, or they're Etonians. They don't know what it's like to be like you or me. They don't know what it's like to feel real poverty, uh, poverty I should say living from hand to mouth, going to um, food banks or anything like that. They don't know. These people are career politicians. They suck each other off to try and get one up on each other. And I do agree with Dominic Cummings on that point. And I think if you think about any industry, whether it's um, utilities, communication, even wankers, uh, I mean bankers, they all have some form of regulatory body, an independent body, objective, who lays down the law. What can they do? What can they not do? Uh, what can they say? What can they not say? What constitutes legal practice? What doesn't constitute legal practice? What we've seen since Brexit is that in this country, politics is broken. Our parliament is now being seen for what it is. They are useless. They are corrupt. They are inept. Um, we saw what happened during lockdowns. 
It wasn't just Tories or Labour. We had Boris Johnson, we had Rishi Sunak with this birthday party gathering thing, if you remember. Even Keir Starmer. He was drinking beers or having a curry, whatever it was, because he was working. What we need is some kind of practice or protocol or regulatory body to hold MPs accountable. We need something or someone put in place who are completely objective when it comes to the political party. They can be bankrolled or financed um, away from the political spectrum. Um, they need to basically tell the MPs what they can and what they can't do. What can they get away with? What can they not get, uh, get away with? At the moment, we have this thing called the ministerial code, which means fuck all. Um, we need some form of rules put in place so that if we show signs of corruption or ineptitude or negligence or whatever, or self-serving interests, that these people get sacked. We have to remember that when they want to stand and when they get elected as an MP, they take an oath. They are swearing some form of oath that they will represent and serve the people in their constituency and the wider nation as a whole. What we see right now is we have an MP who, as I say, he took a fucking oath to sit and serve within Parliament. Um, we're in a time of, you know, extreme crisis with the cost of living and energy and Brexit and post-Covid. We're in the midst of, because we're already in it, what could be a massive recession. And this motherfucker needs to be in his constituency, representing his constituency, working within the party, which is the Tories who are in power at the moment, to try and get us out of this mess. Yet, instead of that, because Parliament's not in recess right now, Parliament is sitting. He has chosen to fuck off on his own self-interests, go on this reality show, um, and earn a fucking load of cash. Now, he claims he's there to try and spread the word of dyslexia, which in itself is a fantastic charity, a brilliant cause. But if you are so empowered and driven to spread that message, then fucking resign. Give the, the role of MP uh, for your area to somebody who will actually try their hardest and then go off and self-serve your interests. Go and be a patron for a charity. Go onto the streets here, fundraise, give your time. If it's dyslexia, if it's NSPCC, if it's famine and poverty, whatever it is, whatever the cause is close to your heart, I am all for that. But do not do it when you are paid, when you have taken an oath to represent the people of this country, the people who elected you to represent them and their interests and their concerns, you should be sitting in Parliament right now. All the parties really should be coming together as best they can, put their collective heads together and get us the fuck out of this mess. Instead, he's in fucking Australia. Now, watching him eat kangaroo testicles is quite hilarious. Watching the other campmates uh, say that he's a prick is quite hilarious. Seeing Boy George um, talking about the pain and the worry that he went through with his mother who was ill is really, really sad to see. Um, and I don't think the, the humiliation that he's going to go through on that show is enough. We saw recently someone trying to throw eggs or flour at uh, King Charles and the Queen Consort Camilla. And I think the same punishment should be bestowed on Matt Hancock. He should be made to go through every major town and city, bollock naked, with flour and eggs or things of that nature being pelted at the little fucker because of what he did with our money, because of what he did with PPE, because of what he did with the care homes, and what he's doing right now. Now, I don't want to take anything away from the message that he is purporting to be um, all for, which is dyslexia anyone with a learning difficulty, anyone who's suffering from mental health problems, anything of that nature, I'm completely all for anyone who wants to be a patron for a charity like, as that, like that. It's quite clear that what he is doing is self-serving his own interests and he's trying to get some, some sort of public sympathy, some sort of uh, sympathy vote um, because he wants to win, because he wants to be there as long as possible to potentially enhance the earning potential as being king of the jungle it's a sob story people shouldn't be falling for it the number of times that he was 
pictured in the newspapers or was on political commentary shows or gave interviews and he was a swami he was a wet little prick then he's a wet little prick now his entire career has been built on bullshitting people and that's what he's doing right now he went on the show crying saying oh, i want forgiveness i just want a bit of forgiveness the only thing that you want forgiveness from is from your wife and your kids the people that you put through the mill when you decided to fuck the office lady <laughs> leave your wife for her what did he say when he was asked he said oh i fell in love you fucking prick when you see pictures of the queen when she had to go to the funeral for Prince Philip, a man that she'd been married to for over 70 years. This is a man that she had known and had been conversing with, and you could call it courting, for 80 years, maybe more. She had to sit alone. She had to say goodbye to her life companion, two people who recognised what their duty was to serve our nation. Whether or not you agree, whether or not you're a royalist or not, they did give up their time. They, they, they were servants for the country. This isn't about being pro-royalist, by the way. This was an old lady in her mid-90s who was saying goodbye to her husband and she had to sit by herself. I'm sure we all remember those pictures. Matt Hancock, the guidance that he fucking came up with, broke that guidance. He went, ah, to us. He went, ah, to the guidance. And he went off and fucked the first bit of ass that he could find. Now he wants us to feel sorry for him. No, no, no. I don't think so. This is a man who has made a shitload of money off public money by misappropriating public funds, giving contracts to companies owned by his friends, and getting a little bit of this for it. This is a man who, in, the, in those contracts, was uh, arming those on the front line with PPE that was completely unusable, completely unsuitable, not fit for purpose. What a fucking waste of money that was. Lord only knows what the cost to replenish that fuck up was. This is a man who knew all of the data that the newspapers and all the other news agencies knew at the time and still released people who were sick or had no business going back into care homes so that they could spread the disease in an enclosed area so that more vulnerable people, more elderly people, more caregivers who were armed with unsuitable PPE were all going to get infected. Thanks, Matt. This is the same bloke who then decided, oh yeah, like I just said, I'll fuck the first bit of ass that comes my way. I'm going to leave my wife and kids for her as well. I'm not going to say sorry. I'm just going to hold my head up and continue to serve as an MP. And then the first sign that there's some dollar bills to be made from this that comes his way, he fucks off from serving his constituency. He leaves the woman's side that he's just left his wife for. Forget about the duty, forget about you and me who need some help to get out of this fucking mess. And he goes off to Australia for a month and he's going to earn five times his annual salary for a few weeks work. <sighs> there's, a, there's a guy that I listen to sometimes on, um, on LBC, uh, Mr. James O'Brien, who when he goes in on one, he, uh, he does speak quite a lot of sense. And I do implore you to check out some of... Um, some of the videos that are doing the rounds on YouTube where he had a go at Matt Hancock. And I have to say, he could have gone in much harder on Matt Hancock. Matt Hancock got away with one there. I think what this whole saga has um, highlighted from the Brexit vote till now, with all the dilly and the dallying and will they and won't they, and just getting on with it, with Theresa May, to Boris Johnson, to Liz Truss, to even Rishi with Gavin Williamson, to Matt Hancock now, I think what is clear, beyond any doubt, these people are in it for themselves, these people are inept, these people are useless, um, and we need some form of independent regulator. Like we have with Ofgem, like we have with Ofcom, like we have with you know other markets, other industries, and they really need to have the power to sack ministers if they are going to show any hint of being corrupt or inept or negligent or dereliction of duty or self-serving their own interests like we're seeing with Matt Hancock now. It's the only way that we're going to give a kick up the backside and reform what is a broken system. I don't think you're going to do too much in terms of how many parties are going to exist because you're either going to be sort of in the centre or you're going to be on the left or you're going to be on the right or some sort of makeup. 
And if you have too many parties, there'll be too few people, you'll have such a di diluted um, vote, it'll be difficult to, for anyone to get a decent majority. But what you can do is have people who have the ability to keep order, like the Speaker does in the House, and the ability to keep the behaviour and the conduct and the integrity of the people who take an oath, who swear themselves in to represent and serve you and me, this country, uh, to stop it from going down the shitter. And I think now more than ever, we need a clamour, we need a petition, we need something to drive change. We need some way to keep these fucking individuals in check or we're just going to go through the same motion. We're going to go from crisis to crisis. And instead of having someone semi-decent, they're going to see the pound signs. And they're going to fuck off and self-serve their own interests anyway. Anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I'm sure there's millions of you out there have probably got a completely different opinion. There are some of you who probably do feel sorry for Matt Hancock and think that he deserves a second chance. Uh, it's probably a third or a fourth or even a fifth chance for him, to be honest with you. Um... Let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't mind you have if you have a difference of opinion, but I just think this motherfucker needs to be sacked. We need to have better calibre of people putting themselves forward for representing us. In the Premier League, for example, if you want to buy a football club, they've got this fit and proper persons test. Maybe there should be some sort of background check on anyone who's looking to run for office. But certainly there's got to be some sort of regulatory body who doesn't answer to a political affiliation who if they see that someone is not behaving or is breaking whatever the rules are they go in and they fuck that person off i don't see any other way for the system to change anyway let me know your thoughts if you think i'm talking absolute bollocks feel free to let me know uh, but i'll shoot another video soon and i hope you guys i know it's a difficult time but i do hope you guys take care positive mental attitude where you possibly can I'll catch you soon.